Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I want to talk to you about prophecy. But I want you guys to understand, because for many of you that don't understand what prophecy means or what it is, well, basically what it is, is it's foretelling the future before it happens. And I've come to a realization that so many people are running to horoscopes, they're running to sidekicks and all these other things that they should not be running to. If you want to know the future, there's only one place that can tell you the future. It's not in a horoscope. It's not these sidekicks who are asking for your money and so on and so on. And they just make so many uh, random things, guessing things. And many of them are totally off. But yeah, there's only one thing that is accurate. And this is the Bible. <clears throat> the Bible tells us the future. <laughs> So prophecy is telling the future before it happens. And let me remind you, when it comes to the Bible, the Bible has foretold the future of the world. You want to know what the history of the world is? Read the Bible. The Bible is clear. It is pre-recorded history before it takes place. And not one prophecy in the Bible has ever failed. Their Bible's over one-fourth prophecy and over 80% of Bible prophecy has already come to pass. That's one of the backbones to Bible prophecy. That's one of the reasons why you can trust the Bible, because your Bible is about over one-fourth prophecy. So that's why it's one of the backbones that you can hold on to. But I want to say this, because God does not want anybody to be in the dark. He does not want anyone to be ignorant. He wants people to know what is coming. And this is why... He has given us Bible prophecy. Let me read this to you from Isaiah chapter 45, verse 19. I have not spoken in secret in a dark place of the earth. God has not spoken in secret or in dark. He's laid out everything for everybody to know. And if you go to Isaiah chapter 46, from 9 to 10, this is what it says. <clears throat> Remember the former things of old, for I am God, and there is no other. I am God, and there is none like me. Well, anybody can say that, right? Well, let's continue reading and see what it says. God's going to prove, prove to us that he is who he says he is. Because anybody can make that claim, I am God, and there is none like me. For I am God, and there is no other. Let me read it again. Remember the former things of old. Well, he's saying, remember... The things that I've told you in the past. For I am God, and there is no other. I am God, and there is none like me. Declaring the end from the beginning, and from ancient times things that are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. Now, you can study the Quran, the Book of Mormons, Confucius, Buddha scriptures, the Hindu scriptures, all the other, whatever you want to call it, faiths, religious doctrines, whatever you want to call it, not one of them has ever, ever has given so much boldness that God says, he's speaking with boldness here, that I am the one that is declaring the end from the beginning, and I'm going to make it known to you. You can study the other one. Not even one. You cannot escape it. God declares the end from the beginning so much in a way that when it happens, you will have to acknowledge that He and He alone is God and that Scripture and Scripture alone is His holy word. He will show you which books you can trust in and which books you cannot trust in. He will show you which ones are inspired and which ones that are, are not inspired. And there's only, only one book that is inspired, and that is the Holy Bible. And then look, go to Isaiah chapter 42, verse 9. Behold, the former things have come to pass, and new things I declare before they spring forth. I tell you of them. I tell you of them. So, it's clear. And by the way, the Bible has a track record of 100% accuracy when it comes to foretelling the future. It's never failed. It's always come on time. It's always come on true all the time because God does not lie. And God is actually saying, 
to the, the former um, people that were worshipping false gods. You think you worship the true God? God actually challenges them, okay? I challenge you to do what no one else has been able to ever do before. Foretell the future like I have. Let me read that to you. In Isaiah chapter 44, I'll start from verse 6. Thus says the Lord, the King of Israel, and His Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first and I am the last. Beside me there is no God. Right here. And who can proclaim as I do? Let him, let him declare it and set it in order for me, since I appointed the ancient people and the things that are coming and shall come. Let them show those to them. Do not fear, nor be afraid. Have I not told you from that time and declared it? You are my witnesses. Is there a God beside me? Indeed, there is no other rock. I know not one. Those who make an image, all of them are useless. God is clear. God has proven himself over and over again and again. He said, I'm going to tell you the future. But I'm not just going to tell you the future. But I'm going to tell you the exact specifics. So that when it happens, you will not be able to deny it. You cannot, you cannot escape it. You will have to come back to this very time, to this very day, and you will remember that I told you exactly, word for word, what is happening right now. So you have to acknowledge that I, and I alone, am God. And that the Bible is indeed, for what it claims to be, my holy word. That will be the proof that I will give to you. You want to know that God is real? <coughs> <clears throat> study prophecy. God proves himself over and over and over again. But I want to get into this. That's what prophecy is. So we're going to get into this. <clears throat> so, we are definitely living in the last days, my friends. We are in the final moments. We are in the final seconds. We are beyond the last days. But the number one sign was, but for you to understand this, because the Jews were scattered, okay? They disobeyed God. So God said, because if you go to Deuteronomy, well, let me see if I can find it. In the book of Deuteronomy, because they disobeyed the Lord, the Lord said that he would scatter them throughout the four corners of the earth. Right here. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 64. This is what it says, and it's all through scripture. Then the Lord will scatter you among all peoples from one end of the earth to the other and there you shall serve other gods which neither you nor your fathers have known wood and stone and among those nations you shall find no rest nor shall the sole of your foot have a resting place but there the Lord will give you a trembling heart failing eyes and anguish of soul your life shall hang in doubt before you you shall fear day and night and have no assurance of life. And we know exactly that. The Jews did not have assurance of life. And yet God said that he would also bring them back. That's the significant thing, people. You have to understand with everything that the Jews went through. Right, it's incredible. No other race of people, okay? No other race of people has been taken off as their real estate, has been scattered throughout the four corners of the earth, has been butchered and killed, tremendous deaths, and yet they, they came back to the exact same real estate as they were taken off of. That's exactly what we find in the Bible. God foretold the history of the Jewish people, and yet he's not done with them yet. He's not done with them yet. He said they would be scattered because they disobey me, but yet at the same time, because I love them, and they're going to fulfill amazing things in my end time calendar that I have for them, I'm going to bring them back to the nation of Israel. So I'm going to reserve my people, and I'm going to watch over history and to see to it that everything that I said unfolds exactly as I stated. Now this is literally amazing. Because look at Jeremiah. But before I get into that, I want to go to Hosea. I want to go to the book of Hosea. Where it also talked about God would scatter them. Right here. Hosea chapter 9 verse 17. My God will cast them away 
because they did not obey him, and they shall be wanderers among the nations. And we know that the Jews were wanderers among the nations. And if you also go to, uh, go back to Deuteronomy, but go to chapter 4 this time. Right here, Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 26. I call heaven and earth to witness against you this day that you will soon utterly perish from the land which you cross over the Jordan to possess. You will not belong bring your days in it. Be immediately destroyed. And the Lord will scatter you among the peoples. And you will be left few in number among the nations where the Lord will drive you. See that? Where the Lord will drive you. They were scattered there. But what am I about to read? Yeah. Jeremiah. God said that he'd bring them back. Look at this. <laughs> Behold. Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 4. Wait. No. Verse 5. Sorry. Verse 5. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, that I will raise to David a branch of righteousness. Okay, not, sorry, it's not there. It's not there. It's verse 7. Verse 7. Yeah. Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 7. Therefore, behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, that they shall no longer say, as the Lord lives who brought up the children of Israel, from the land of Egypt but as the Lord lives who brought up and lead the descendants of the house of Israel from the northern country and from the, all the countries where I had driven them and they shall dwell in their own land you see it says specifically about the northern country. Did you realize that? Behold the days are coming, says the Lord, that they shall no longer say as the Lord lives who brought up the children of Israel from from the land of Egypt. But the Lord lives who brought up and led the descendants of the house of Israel from the northern country. Because there was a time when, when Russia said no. We are not letting the Jews go back. They are staying here. They are our prisoners, and we are not letting them go back. But remember, when God makes a promise, he means what he says. So that's why it said after, if you continue reading, and from all the countries where I had driven them, and they shall dwell in their own land. <laughs> and then Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 7. Well, I want to read before that. Because God has a plan that they're going to play an important role in the end times during the time of, of tribulation, which is time for that time for Israel's trouble. Only through trouble will they see God and come back to Him. Look at this. I'll start from verse one. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, "Thus speaks the Lord God of Israel, saying, Write in a book for yourself." all the words that I have spoken to you. For behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, that I will bring back from the captivity my people Israel and Judea, says the Lord, and I will cause them to return to the land that I gave to their fathers, and they shall possess it. Now, these are the words that the Lord spoke concerning Israel and Judea. For thus says the Lord, We have heard a voice of trembling, of fear, and not of peace. Ask now and see, whether a man is ever in labor with child. So why do I see every man with his hand on his limbs, like a woman in labor, and all things turn pale? Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. And it is the time of Jacob's troubles, but he shall be saved out of it. Wow. So Israel was the number one sign. Israel came back to their land, even in uh, Ezekiel chapter 36. Then we're going to go on after this. Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 24. For I will take you from among the nations, gather you out of all countries, and bring you into your own land. Actually, one more I'm going to show you. One more, one more. 
Ezekiel chapter 11, verse 17. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, I will gather you from the peoples, assemble you from the countries where you have been scattered, and I will give you the land of Israel. So that's a clear, it's a clear promise that God promised the land of Israel. So the Jews came back May 14th, 1948, exactly as God stated. He'd bring them back. They came back. But also, if you're a student of Bible prophecy, you would realize that it says in Zechariah that in the latter days that Jerusalem will come a burdensome stone for all peoples. You can read that in Zechariah chapter 12, verse 3. This is what it says. And it shall happen in that day that I will make Jerusalem a very heavily stone for all peoples. All who would have it away will surely be cut in pieces, though all nations of the earth are gathered against it. So it's going to be a burdensome stone for all people. You would have thought that this would have been crazy. Anybody to make this claim back then had to be nuts. And yet what happened today, Jerusalem and Israel are the center of attention on our television. Every time we turn on CNN, they're talking about Israel or Jerusalem or this and this and that. And yet the United Nations has devoted its time on Jerusalem and Israel more than any other country and so on. And yet you have the Vatican, you have the European Union, you have the United Nations, and you have the Arab countries telling Israel to give up their sovereignty over the city of Jerusalem. Now this would have been impossible until the Jews got Jerusalem back because if the Arabs have Jerusalem there's no problem we have it it's in our possession but just the fact that the Jews got Jerusalem back June 5th through 10th in 1967 during the Six Day War shows that everything is on the ball, everything is unfolding, everything is ready now to go to uh, Armageddon, because the real battle will be over the city of Jerusalem. So what's the next sign? So Israel back in the land, but they were scattered before, and God promised to bring them back, and he did exactly that, and we're seeing that everything that God said he has done. So let's continue. So Jerusalem is a burdensome stone today, no question about it. And... The next sign is the rise and the formation of a one world government. The Bible clearly talks about a, the one world government. You can read that in Revelation chapter 13, verse 7. Let me read it to you. This is what it says, verse 7. Okay, and authority was given him over every tribe and tongue and nation. And then verse 8 is talking about a one world religion. All who dwell on the earth will worship him. So I want to start again from verse 7. And authority was given him over, you see that, over every tribe, which means all the tribes of the earth. Look at that. And authority was given him over every tribe, which means all the tribes, and tongue, that means all the languages of the world, and nation, and all the nations. So it's clear that there's a one world government that the Bible prophesied is coming and also a one world religion verse 8 where it says all who dwell on the earth will worship him is coming a time of, fine, of uh, control this is a one world government system and even in the book of Daniel it talks about a one world government the, about the Nebuchadnezzar's dream that he had the king and the image that he saw about the head of gold, the two chest sides of arms, the belly and thighs of brass, the long length of iron. Well, the head of gold was Babylon, the two chest sides of arms were the Medes and the Persians, the belly and thighs of brass was Greece, and the long length of iron was Rome. And on the ten toes was the uh, final world government. Because after, if you go to Daniel chapter 7, verse 23, says, Thus he said, The fourth beast shall be a fourth kingdom on the earth which shall be diverse from all others, and it shall devour the whole world, trample it, and break it in pieces. Now that is significant, because for those of you that know history, the Roman Empire did not, did not get conquered from an outside attack. It just fell on its own. The decline and fall of the Roman Empire. So how in the world can Daniel say the fourth beast? How did he know that nothing else would replace the fourth? How did he know after the Roman Empire 
because the Roman Empire lost its power in 476 AD. So how in the world did Daniel know that no other world power would replace it globally? It's the only way that he knew that is because of God, God's intervention, God's revelation. That's why it says the fourth. Remember, the head of gold was Babylon. The two chest sides of arms were the Medes and the Persians. The belly and thighs of brass was Greece. The long length of iron was Rome. And on the ten toes of the image. So it's going to be revived. It's going to come back into life to restoration. The revived Roman Empire. <laughs> so I want to get into this. This prophecy is coming to pass right before our very eyes about the rise and the formation of a one world government. I want to read this to you exactly as the Bible stated. It is happening. This coming a world government, people. So, I want to read this to you guys about who is it? Yeah, David Rockefeller. He's a mega banker. He's an internationalist that is working on a world government, and there's many other people also that are working on a world government. This is what David Rockefeller said. Okay, David Rockefeller. We are grateful to the Washington Post, the New York Times, the Time Magazine and other great publications whose directors have attended our meetings and respected their promises of direction for almost 40 years it would have been impossible for us to develop our plan for the world if we had been subjected to the bright light of publicity during those years but the, the work is now much more sophisticated and prepared to march towards a world government. So it's clear what they are doing here. And yet, as it, remember, I showed you the Bible said this, and yet that's exactly what is happening. Now, it's literally amazing. Let me give you the history here. 1930, 1913, sorry. 1913, the League of Nations was formed. 1919, the Council on Former Relations was formed. 1922, the CFR endorses world government. 1945, the United Nations was formed. 1948, the world constitution is drafted providing a world council to enforce world law. This is world law, the whole world and calls upon nations to surrender their arms to a world government. And in 1959, the diagram of world government under the Constitution for the Federation of Earth. So with time, this whole world is going to have a single constitution. It's going to be a constitution to protect the world. Okay, and Richard Nixon, 1967, calls for a new world order, 1968. Nick Nelson Rockefeller pledges support of a new world order. Okay, this is present. Okay, listen to this. Okay, wait. The Vatican, 2008. The Vatican says that a new world order is gaining ground. Here's Bush. Here's President Bush right here. Then this lawlessness will threaten the peace and democracy of the emerging new world order we now see this long dream this long dreamed so they've been dreaming about this for a long time long dreamed of vision we all worked toward for so long so they've been working at this for so long coming from their own mouth okay and then Gorbachev further global progress is now possible only through a quest for universal consent in the movement toward a New World Order. Okay. And I got some more quotes from them. <laughs> right here. Okay. Gordon Brown, former Prime Minister of England. The international financial crisis has given world leaders a unique opportunity to create a truly global society. Okay. Where is the remaining? Okay. Okay, and I got more.
Okay, let me read this to you guys here. <clears throat> okay, right here. Timothy Geithner, former prime president of the Federal Reserve. We need a new global monetary authority and de facto global financial dictatorship operating across borders and forcing nations and corporations to register and adopt here to strip monitoring and regulation. The single, <coughs> listen to this, the single global currency association is calling for the world to embrace a single global currency to be managed by a global central bank within a global monetary union. Now think about this, ladies and gentlemen. If the Antichrist, it, like it says in Revelation chapter 13 from 16 to 18, which is the false prophet, and he causes all, not some, not a little, not a few, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark, on the right hand, that no one will be able to buy or sell except one who has the mark. Here is wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast for his number of man. His number is 666. So it says he causes all. In order for that to happen, you have to have a single global currency. And yet, what are we hearing right here? That's exactly what they're calling for. To bring the whole world into a global currency. Exactly as the Bible prophesied over 2,000 years ago. Let me read that to you again. The Single Global Currency Association is calling for the world to embrace a single global currency to be managed by a global central bank within a global monetary union. And if you go on, this is 2013, people, where they, they just came out with a new tattoo. Uh, a tattoo. 2013, a new this stamp tattoo is developed that attaches to the wearer's skin and will allow them to replace all passwords and all other forms of identification. Now, isn't that incredible? Yeah, we are living in exciting times. But before I let you guys go, I want to read something to you. Like, I cannot cover everything. But this was back in... Uh, Hold on. Even on the newspaper, they said New World Order to Save Earth by Gordon Brown. Yeah. Let me read this to you guys here. Okay. There. Yeah, 2002. Listen to this. 2002, the FDA approves a microchip implant for humans. For humans. Look at that. It's incredible. And I, I wish I can go on more people and explain to you because people need to be warned about this. They, they want to put microchips in people. They're talking about the year 2017. But if it's not 2017, something's going to be by 2017 because we have been in databases people we have been in databases okay axion choice point they have all information all our phone numbers emails they know everything about us but now think about it we're living in the last times we're living in the end times they're getting people conditioned for the mark of the beast so now what is here it's not coming it's already here is biometric data biometric information biometric databases the only way for our ability to buy and sell will be linked in with a palm scan or a finger scan or a face scan or an iris scan. So this is why they want to bring in a cashless society exactly as it stated in Revelation chapter 13 that in the last days there would be a cashless society like we just saw before. <laughs> they want a global union. So to suck the whole world into their system so they can bring everybody into biometrics and then afterwards they're going to go it's all connected to the mark of the beast by the way this is what they're bringing biometrics is three measurements of the body your hand 
your face and your eyes. Then you're going to have the palm scan, the talking about bringing this in the computers, and also this too about talking about control, that uh, you're going to have to ask for permission to go on the internet. You're gonna, they're going to be policing the internet. You're going to need, an, you're gonna need a license. Let's say you cannot drive a car without a license. You're going to need a license to go on the internet by the approval of the government. And if they don't like you, they'll just disconnect you. So anyways, they're bringing in biometrics. You'll only be able to buy and sell through biometric scanning and all this. This is all tying up to the mark of the beast. They're using body parts to buy for things. Just like I said, the right hand or the forehead. Now they have face deals. You can pay for things with your face and so on and so on. It's all connected. Everything is happening so fast, people. But the other signs, I cannot get into it all. I'm sorry, guys. But Russia and Iran, they never liked each other ever before. This is the very first time in human history where Russia and Iran have signed a military alliance with one another. Russia supplying a nuclear Iran, and now you have Turkey on board. You have Russia and Iran and Turkey working together exactly as it's stated in the book of Ezekiel. The book of Ezekiel prophesied that there's coming a war with all the Arab nations that will come up against Israel. I want to read that thing to you, then I'm going to close it here. This is what is going to happen in the future. Ezekiel chapter 38, verse 21. God's going to call his judgment upon the enemies of Israel. I will call for a sword against Gog throughout all my mountains, says the Lord God. Every man's sword will be against his brother. And I will bring him into judgment with pestilence and bloodshed. I will rain down on him, on his troops, and on many peoples who are with him, flooding rain, great hailstones, fire and brimstone. Thus I will magnify myself, myself. I will, know, okay, I will be known in the eyes of many nations, and they shall know that I am the Lord. Amen. This is incredible. This stuff's going to happen, people. This is the Word of God, and not one thing that God has ever said has ever failed and never will fail. Every prophecy will come to pass with complete and total accuracy. And this is all i got to say. I'm signing off, and God bless you all. God bless.